Welcome to Kenny's, which is a brand new retro game hunt based in Dinnington in South Yorkshire. Here we go, we're going to take a look around this awesome shop with some awesome stock, notably shown here. I think you're really going to enjoy this one and uh, I cannot tell you how many people have reached out to me over the past three months to tell me that I need to go here. Kenny's is, well Kenny is friends with my mate James and Gemma. They own Doorway to Darkness. I've done some lovely retro game hunts in there. In fact, I do need to get up there again when I'm back from Holland. As by the time you watch this video, I'll be in Holland doing some retro game hunting over in Europe. So we're gonna have some European episodes coming up. But back to this, we're taking a quick look around here and then we're gonna dive into it. So let's talk about what we've got here at Kenny's. We've got lots of games and more figures than I actually expected, which we will get to. But let's talk about the video games first. Everything was neatly presented. Everything was in alphabetical order. Everything had a price on it and everything was wrapped in these cute cellophane cases. Again, if you've been to Doorway to Darkness, these guys are friends. They're very, very similar. And uh, I can see why, because the the aesthetic of the shop really, really works. Um, there wasn't much of cartridge-based stuff because for me, I do prefer my cartridge-based stuff unless, unless, because I'm on a bit of a Panasonic 3DO kick at the moment, a Sega CD and home computing, Amiga. If you've been watching my channel recently, I've been pumping out a ton of Amiga content and there's much more to come actually. I'm starting a mini series next week. It's quite a special one actually. But unfortunately in here, there was no Sega CD, no Mega CD and no Amiga stuff. So Amiga, Sega CD and Panasonic 3DO aside, cartridge based stuff i am a super nintendo girl i love my super nintendo i have a relatively good collection of super nintendo games all of the games that were on the shelf i owned i own them all so i actually didn't pick up any super nintendo which is not like me i will say what i am after actually is a pretty terrible Super Nintendo game and that is SimCity 2000. You can see SimCity just next to this, next to Bomberman 3. Great game. Um, but unfortunately there was no SimCity 2000 here. I might look for that when I'm over in Holland um, and see if I can get myself a nice little Dutch copy and hopefully I can change the language to English in the menus. So I didn't buy any cartridge based game but I will show you in this episode exactly what I picked up when we get back to the Lady Lounge. Now you saw that little time lapse there. The shop itself in terms of space, again, it's really easy to move around, uh, it's super clean. It's not it's definitely nowhere near as big as James and Gemma's shop over at Doorway to Darkness, which is not too far from this. You could do both of these shops in one day. So if you're planning on visiting the UK, and I'll say this now, I get a lot of questions. Gemma, I'm going to London. Is there anything in London? My short answer is, not really. What you really need to do is come up to the Midlands because there's an absolute wealth of shops and I've covered the majority of them here on the channel. And if you wanted to spend a day, you could do this and Doorway to Darkness in a day. So um, what I might do is put something on the website and do a little kind of roundup of the shops. Um, I'm gonna be hoping to do a lot more in the summer as well. I want to get over to Super Tomato in Wales. I want to get down south. Uh, there's one in Swindon I want to go to. So there's lots of good, stu good stuff coming up. If you are a bit of a, I guess, a, a retro game hunter, or you like to travel a little bit. And again, I'm excited to get to a shop called Game Over in Amsterdam. So lots to look forward to. And uh, yeah, let's continue. Now in terms of PlayStation 1, what I tend to do is have a little look through and if there's anything I don't recognise, I get it out and I have a look on YouTube, I check reviews, I'm thinking, is that for me, is that not for me? Sometimes I'll take a punt on things, sometimes I won't. In this particular episode, there was nothing I was looking for and there was nothing that jumped out. But I'm really kind of keen here to show you guys 
obviously not every single game because that's not realistic but I think it's really good just to show you what what's in stock um because again I know a lot of you guys go to the shops that I've, I've been to and I know a couple of people have already done this we've got SimCity 2000 there on the PS1 um I just mentioned it on the Super Nintendo but I have it on the PlayStation 1 just flipping it back actually it's not the best port on the Super Nintendo but still, Twisted Metal back there, wow. And in the double case, it looks really, really nice. Price-wise, um, the prices were, some of the games were a bit, ooh, I was like, ooh, a little bit expensive, but you know what, I got, a, I got a nice deal, and Kenny, I'm sure, will look after people. You definitely looked after me. So these were really, really cool coasters. I don't actually need coasters, but I'm gonna use these as decals because spoiler alert, I did pick these up. to a little bit of cartridge based gaming then we've got some GBA games here just having a little siphon through again what's really good and is a class for me as a white flag is everything are in these little sentinel cases um, so these are just plastic cases sentinel was an old old brand I always call them sentinel cases it just sticks so massive thumbs up especially for your cardboard stuff because it just creases so bad uh, which is such a shame Sega wise we've got the master si uh, master system oh my god I just committed a travesty here sorry Mega Drive or Sega Genesis rather um again nothing much I was looking for um some unboxed NES NES you did see some boxed earlier as well Sega Dreamcast next then and I have a modest collection of Sega Dreamcast games and I added one game to my Sega Dreamcast collection from this video. So perhaps if you're eagle-eyed, you will spot what I picked up. Um, and then if you're not, you can just wait till the end of the episode and you can check it out. Um, some games that I did pull out and put back, which is, is I tend to kind of do that if I'm considering games. But again, what I tend to find with Sega Dreamcast games is it's the same game over and over and over. So what you want to look out for is as follows. Check that first and foremost, Zombie Revenge. Um, 44.99 that was haven't played it though so is zombie revenge any good but white flag if you go into a retro game shop and you see sega's sega saturn and sega dreamcast games that you don't normally see again that is a good sign that you're in a good shop i always find that you can judge a shop quite well by their sega saturn and sega dreamcast stock because you tend to find it is the same thing over and over and over and I will say in here you did like the game I just picked up it was nice to see some different stocks so nice one Kenny on having a lovely variety of Sega Dreamcast games that stem beyond your Shenmue's and Shenmue 2 which are classics but unfortunately are becoming far too common just having a, a quick chat with Kenny here shout out against Kenny lovely shop beautiful I love what you've done he was a massive Star Wars fan as you can see we got baby Yoda there or Grogu little R2D2 and um, and I mentioned figures there was a hell of a lot of figures um, from a different variety of genres and video games and then we've got some toys bundled in here we got the handheld section um, we got some really nice candles and I have a little smell of them. You'll check check this out in a minute and obviously a lightsaber which I was pretty poor at using. <laughs> smells really nice. Th there's a Jabba's couple Palace that smell smells right. really really nice at Ewok. Have always... Ooh. Okay. So, some of them are probably a bit more of an acquired. Wookie. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> smell a Wookie. That's what a Wookie would smell. Oh. oh my god. Not not a fan. The trash compactor. Oh, cantina. Yeah, it smells quite nice. X-wing cockpit. Oh yeah. <laughs> Old leather. Oh. <laughs> Old dirty leather, maybe. Mm. <laughs> So smelling the Star Wars themed candles was actually a lot of fun. I would implore you to do that. If you go into this shop, smell the Wookiee candle. Oh my goodness. I can't even describe what it smells like. I mean, I would still hug Chewbacca because he just looks cute and comfortable to hug. But I actually, all joking aside, I think I might buy those. Not from here, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Um, but I wouldn't mind a set of those Star Wars candles, actually. I recently completed the Lego Star Wars game Skywalker Saga over on my Twitch. And it was all nine episodes and it just made me relive the nine movies, but with my, my followers. It was absolutely brilliant. I'm on a massive Star Wars kick as well as an Amiga kick at the moment. So <laughs> I think back here at base, developing the game room with the Lady Loft and the Lady Lounge, I think those, those uh, candles would go very, very well, actually. I might have to purchase them. Have you got them? Please let me know. Um, I really need to get myself some Star Wars candles. PlayStation 3 time now and PlayStation 2, both of which I have games that I feel quite comfortable with in the collection. There's only a couple and I can't even think off the top of my head what they are. There's only really a couple, especially PS2 games that I'd be willing to buy. In fact, Rule of Rose is one of them, which is a horror game that was banned for perhaps all the right reasons. In fact, definitely all of the right reasons. And I've been thinking about getting a copy, a Japanese copy of Rule of Rose because it's a lot cheaper and somebody told me that you can actually change the language to English and I do have two Japanese PS3s. So I am considering it and so I don't know, but I'm kind of over the PS2 because I've got so many and when I moved house, I gave so many away and gave so many to charity shops and then I gave Jess bundles because she runs a reseller kind of like not antique but mid-century modern stuff and retro stuff uh, like retro clocks and watches and whatever else she can find so you know for somebody else to enjoy but Rule of Rose I've not I've never seen it out in the wild and I'm kind of refusing to buy it online it's one of them that I think I'm gonna see it in the flesh and I'm gonna make a decision on that spot when I see it. So hopefully it will be at one of the gaming markets that we've got coming up. We've got Birmingham Retro Gaming Market, which I'm going to, plenty of markets, but if you want to keep an eye on the retro gaming markets, please follow me on all the socials because I'm really active on there and I share out information on upcoming events, um, tips, hotspots, places you need to go, just like Ken is. So we got some nice Amiibo stuff, some Game Genie stuff. And how cool are his displays on the back? Couple, I say couple, there's more than a couple. Lots of really nice Game Boy games here as well. So Kenny's guys, we're gonna get back to the Lady Lounge now. I will leave Kenny's Facebook page in the description for you to enjoy.